Okay, so as you can see, we've got a nice bed of Carex here and it's branching down. Obviously this pond's drained at the moment, so it's really easy to get in and pick out the, uh, the Carex. And uh, you can see the, the younger shoots that are reaching towards the, 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 where the most mo moisture is. They're trying to reach out towards the water uh, and they'll be the easiest to pick out. I've got a fork because it is very dry down here. It's been very hot, um, so the ground's pretty baked and these uh, these roots, if you're not careful, if you try and grab them by the by the stems, you can often snap the, the carex and not actually take the root with it. And you want as much root as possible because when you move the plants, um, you, the, the more root you've got, the quicker they're going to establish, the quicker they're going to get down to the moisture and uh, extract that nitro nutrient and grow. So uh, some of these fresh shoots down here, all I do is get the fork underneath as close to the base of the plant as you can and just loosen up the soil beneath it and then grab the, the plant as close to the base as you can, pick it out. Obviously you've got a lot of, of uh, soil with that. Just shake off the soil so there's less weight and you're left with a plant that will uh, be easily planted. I, I cut these, I cut these. I've got a little wood saw here that I'll, I'll cut these down to about six or eight inches so they don't blow over, I'll be plucked out by uh, less, less for, for birds to pluck out, like swans and geese like to eat these. So. Uh, Cut them about six to eight inches, then when you put them in, they're nice and firm and sturdy. You sort of bury them up to bury the, the roots in, maybe a, an inch of, of stem as well. And then they'll take really well. The carrot is brilliant. Um, you'll see the roots system in here. It's really thick and matted. Um, so all those roots are really drawing out a lot of nitrate from the water, which gives you consistent water quality through the summer, especially when you're feeding a lot. You want all that being recycled and uh, as much nitrate taken out of the water as you can so it, it doesn't, if you leave the nitrate in the water without these plants, you're gonna get an aggressive algal bloom because um, that, that, those nitrates are gonna be used by algae if they're not used by weed and if they're not used by plants. If we can use plants, there's less nitrate available for weed and algae. I'm sure we've seen plenty of our videos on that anyway. But yeah, this is really easy to do. I can run along here, in this drained pond particularly, very lucky I've got it drained at the moment. I'm drying this pond out, sterilizing it. Um, it's never been, sort of giving it a bit of a rest year really, trying to get, there's been some weed come up, so I just want to bake it all dry, sterilize it, let it dry out, ready for the next uh, batch of fish in the winter. And uh, while these are trying to reach out towards the pond, I can get in and pick these out and use these in other places where I need them. Um, and yeah, that, that root system is really protecting the banks as well from wave action and uh, good habitat for invertebrates and, and smaller fish and fry. So uh, yeah, this is, this is what I do, Carex. Great, great plant, grows nice and tall, nice and thick, nice colour. Um, however, if we come along here, you'll see this is the sort of stuff we don't like. It's bulrush, typha as we call them. Um, so they grow in a twist, they grow in a fan but they grow really quickly and branch really quickly towards the water. As you, well, as you know, this pond's drained dry and they're really quickly, almost overnight, spread towards the water and stemming out through their, uh, their branching roots, which quickly just, just move beneath the soil. Um, so yeah, we, we don't want this. Obviously this, this bed will keep growing and growing over the years and the, the seeds will start to spread and they'll start to pop up everywhere else. So this is what we don't want. Uh, they grow really tall, then they die in the winter, the leaves fold over and it creates basically a pad of leaves across the surface blocking out the sunlight to the, to the bottom of the pond in this bit and it should just keep growing and eventually you'll have sort of the core through this pond will be all bulrush if I do nothing about it. So you'll see this, this little bed I've got here that's starting to establish. All you do, same thing, to get, uh, get the fork underneath the base of the roots, lever it to loosen it. And there you are, as quick and simple as that, but you'll see this one's already trying to branch off like that. And there's a few little stems trying to shoot off, so they grow really quickly and, and branch out and establish really quickly. And they'll displace the other plants that we want, and they'll steal the sunlight from the... eventually start to steal, steal the sunlight from the, uh, the carrot behind me. So we want to swing the light and the space and the nutrient in the favour of the plants that are beneficial to the pond and the ecosystem. Um, so the bulrush is starting to one really, they, they don't remove as much nitrate as, a, as Carex would, the root system isn't beneficial to the protection of the banks, so it's just, you don't need it and it just, just it has more of a negative impact on your water and your water quality than it does a positive one. So anywhere you find around your lakes, a bed of a bulrush, always beneficial to get it out, really quick and easy to do. They just literally just pick them out of that, no problems. And you'll see there's, you'll get roots up there, grab them out as well if you can. See they're trying to shoot. 
So that's something, if you've got a few hours spare, you find a, bull, a bed of bulrush, beneficial to get it out and plant behind it. You can see this is all junkers behind it, that's no good either. So we'd like to dig that out and put Carex along there. Carex is established everywhere else, it's just the odd patch of junkers. And the, the uh, bulrush has obviously found an opportunity here to uh, establish, start to have, to have it have its way. And I don't want that. So that'll, that'll dry out and, and break down up there, no problem. Um, so that's what we do with bulrush. Horrible plant. Okay, so saving my favourite till last, we've got yellow flag iris here, real good bed of it. It just looks lovely when it flowers in the early summer, well late, late spring if you like. Um, but yeah, it's a bit harder to divide, but you get underneath the rhizome, got the rhizome here, and that'll plant fine into new soil. But like I said, I've got the luxury of having a drained pond here, so I can really quite easily divide these up. So yeah, so you've got a big bit of rhizome. You can split that off into one, two, three. I'd probably plant that on its own. Big bit of rhizome, nice bit of root. Looks lovely in the summer, nice bit of bank binding. Great plant, my favorite. So yeah, I'll get in and pull the front ones off. That'll come back lovely. That won't have any problems there. These, uh, they almost thrive better if you, if you harvest from them every winter and just give them the benefit of the light and air, pulling out anything else you don't want. Put these weeds in here. And yeah, we'll plant them in another, part, another, another pond or lake and uh, get some more yellow flag iris established in other places. Really beneficial plant. You can just keep spreading it, keep breaking it up. We'll do the same with planting these. We'll, uh, Cut them off six to eight inches, plant them in, pack and pack the soil around the rhizome, and then they'll take take a bit longer to establish these, but it's so rewarding with uh, yellow flag iris. They just look beautiful, um, and they shoot up nice and early. I trim them down in the winter, and they start to shoot nice and uniform, and they flower in sort of late May, um, early June, um, just as everything starts to wake up in the summer. These are flowering, and it just puts a smile on your face. Thank you.